Hello, and welcome to the Service-Based Business Society podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Ann Botcher. On our weekly episodes, we will dig into everything you need to know about scaling your service-based business without losing sleep. With my experience in creating over seven figures per month and a passion for marketing, finance, and automation, this show will provide tangible tips and techniques for scaling your business. Let's get started. I have a very special guest, one whose experience and message really aligns with both me personally and on the business side. So I'm going to introduce you to Marissa Lonick. She is a keynote speaker, a life and business coach, three times author, top rated podcast host, and the founder of Mama Work It. After spending nearly 15 years in corporate leadership positions, Marissa shifted gears to becoming a full-time momager and biz momager. Through her books, courses, and coaching programs, she helps busy moms juggling mom life, work life, wife life, fill in the blank life. Her time management and goal achievement strategies have helped the most overwhelmed mamas turn their dreams into reality, even when they thought they had no time to make any of it happen. I think guys, you know right away why this guest aligned so much for me as a mom of three, juggling mom life, wife life, work life, all the things together. It's tough. And whether you have children or you don't, you're still juggling life's responsibilities. And this episode truly comes from a place of talking about time management from the perspective of managing what's important to you. So whether you are a mama, a fur mama, a husband, ultimately there are so many responsibilities to juggle and this episode really dives in. So let's get started. Hi Marissa, thanks so much for joining. Yeah, thanks for having me. So let's jump right in and you know, let's introduce you and, and kind of who you serve and where where people are connecting with you. Absolutely. So my name is Marissa Lonick. I'm the founder of an organization called Mama Work It. And we support women in the juggle of mom life, work life, wife life, fill in the blank life. <laughs> and you can find me at mamaworkit.com, M-A-M-A. I love it. So much the juggling, the absolute, the and and not just the you know the, as you pointed out the wife life and the the rest of the just life. Fill in the blank life. Yeah, yes. we all wear many hats. <laughs> you have kids as well, then? I do. I have four. Four. What youngest to oldest? Yep, I have eight year old twins, and then a four and a half year old. Well, he'll say four and three quarters, and two and a half year old. Yeah, really similar to my kids' ages as well. My oldest is nine, and then seven, and just turned three. So nice. Yeah. Okay. So we're in this a similar season here. Yes, similar season. So I I understand the juggling. So um, when you're talking to people about about kind of their life placement you know, the season, as you, as you just mentioned, what are kind of things are you, are you looking at or what is that overarching message that you have for them? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think a common denominator I see no matter what season you're in, whether you're a parent or not a parent, whether you're an entrepreneur or an employee is a lot of people tend to have this kind of love hate relationship with time. And they see time as this really scarce thing in their life. Like how many times do you catch yourself saying, I don't have time, right? I used to say this ad nauseum all the time. And what happens is when you say this out loud and when you believe this, that there's never enough time, it's it becomes your truth. And you feel like you just never have time for things that are actually important to you, that matter to you, that you wish you could do, your goals, your dreams, your ambition, your, God, I don't know, even just like relaxation or, you know, doing something fun. And that's no way to live, in my opinion. I totally agree. I, I actually had this conversation not that long ago with my husband because people stopped inviting us to things <laughs> because they were like, oh, but you're busy. You're so busy all the time. And I'm like, why do people think we're so busy? And sure, we have a lot on the go. But um, if you compare life now to like a pre-COVID when you like there was plans all the time. And now I'm like, I mean, we don't the weekend evenings, we can go for a barbecue or something. We're not, we're not that busy, but the, you know, people say, how are you doing? And a lot of times it's, oh yeah, like pretty busy. Things are good. And then people, you know, it's, it's framing it and, and. Yeah. Isn't that funny how busy that answer, when you get that 
regular old question, how are you, has become sort of a synonym for good or fine or like, okay. Like people are just wearing it as a badge of honor. And it's, it's mind blowing to me, but it's also, I see it all day and I, I've been guilty of it myself. Right. And it's kind of like, when you say those things, even just in response to small talk, look at the perception that's being put out there. Like now you're not even getting these invites to fun things because people think you're too busy. Meanwhile, you're just saying it almost like it's just rolling off your tongue, like nothing. I, we had the conversation. I said, we really need to, I'm like, no more work mention of the word busy. When I, when I was in my corporate job, our CEO, he did not like the word busy. It was like a banned word. He's like, he, his whole thing was busy is not a unit of measure. And your busy is different than my busy. And because you you get people who, you know, it's like, well, how's the week going? Oh, it's so busy. And it's like, okay, but let's break that down into something that's actually, you know, solvable in terms of like, we have a lot of volume of this task or this issue or, you know, just busy is it's on its own. Didn't actually tell you anything. Yeah. I think that goes hand in hand too when, when people feel overwhelmed because anybody can feel overwhelmed, whether you're, you know, a parent of four or five kids juggling a career and, you know, all these things, or you're like a dog mom, single woman, you know, like you can feel overwhelmed in that state too. It doesn't matter. So it's, it's really like I like to tell my clients too, when you're, when you get into that state, brain dump everything on a piece of paper, right? Get it out of your head because when it's floating in and out of you know, that mental load, it, it even feels more overwhelming just because it's not, it's not out of there, right? It's just, it's coming and going. It's like all disorganized. So just throw it up like on a piece of paper, literally word vomit it on there and then focus on three things, just circle or highlight three things and start from there. And especially in, in the strategic case of, of your business, you know, definitely those revenue streaming things should be where you start. We, we tend to procrastinate those harder tasks or those places that are outside our comfort zone. And I think there's there's value in that. And sometimes there's not value in that because we end up subconsciously stressing about those things and taking up a ton of time and energy when we could have just like blocked it in and gotten it done, right? Yes. I Just before um, we were recording this, I was doing a strategy call with a, a client and we were talking about all these different parts of her business and I've got a lot of stuff to do. And I, I said, you know, all of these things are good, but not all of these things need to happen right this time. Right. Moment. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I think first and foremost, before you can juggle successfully is you have to have clarity in how you want to spend your time, like what you want to get done, what you want your day to look like, how you want to feel at the end of the day, all of that. If you don't have that clarity, what happens is you end up, and we all do, no matter how busy we think we are, we get these free pockets of time throughout the day. And when we don't know how we want to spend it, we just fill it with garbage. We just do something mindless or like scroll social media. And there's nothing wrong with those things if we're doing them intentionally. But I think nine times out of 10, we're not being intentional with it. We're just doing it to sort of fill in the gap, fill in the five minutes here or the 10 minutes there, because we're not quite clear on what we actually want to do or want to get done or where we want to use that time. So honing in on that is super important, I would say, as like a prerequisite first step of getting started. Yes, I think it also comes down to where you're most comfortable. So if you're in kind of that overwhelmed state and you have a whole long list of tasks, you really pull to whatever is your comfort zone. And so, you know, for those that, you know, prefer the sales to the like operation side, then they lean in on that. And then the, you know, operation side becomes a little messier, but also in the reverse, if sales isn't necessarily and that customer outreach and all of these different pieces isn't your natural um, you know, strength or that's not what you enjoy, then you kind of default to, I think I'm going to come over here and work on some of these other things. Absolutely. Yeah. And and let's just be clear, like there's nothing wrong with giving your brain a break with taking time to totally just like numb out here and there. I think when you're using this stuff, though medicinally too often, that's where you run into the issue, right? Because what happens is after, like at the end of the day or the end of the week, if you feel defeated, if you feel like the day ran you rather than you ran the day, well, that's where the problem lies. But if you were like, no, I actually just needed to like zone out and laugh and watch these silly videos, then cool. Good for you. Like you needed that. You listened to what you needed and you did it. Yes. 
it's, isn't that the truth? Everything in moderation. <laughs> All the things that are... I'm a believer, yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, you know, one of the things I struggled with this week in particular, really challenging mom business owner moment when I had said to the kids, hey, we have some time, let's, let's get to the park. And they were so, they were like, we can go to the park right now? I was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. And then I got an emergency client call that was like, oh my gosh, the world is ending. And I was like, that, that moment of like, oh no. And I, I hate to disappoint them. But there was a deadline and whatnot. And so my wonderful mom was like, no problem. And she took them off to the park and it really, I, they were fine. They were at the park playing in the sun and it all worked out. But for me, it was that moment of, oh no, that it, it like hits me a little bit like a, a train of bricks as, oh, I just don't want to disappoint them. But I also don't want to disappoint, you know, the person who is paying and, and they are having this emergency and that's my job. Do you have any advice in situations like that where it's, you're, you're really backed into the corner and you ultimately have to make a choice? Yeah. I mean, that's a really tough call. And I think there's no right or wrong answer as to what you should choose in that situation. And I think really it's case by case, right? Because sometimes to a client, it might feel like an emergency, but to you knowing, you know, kind of the crux of things, the ins and outs of things, it might not. And that's okay, right? Like we all have different opinions, sort of like the busy uh, connotation there. Um, you know, so I would say that's where you need to trust intuitively that what you're choosing is the right choice. And even if you end up in hindsight, looking back and being like, well, damn, that actually wasn't an emergency. And I probably should have just gone to the park. Well, lesson learned, you know, it's just opening up your, your thought process next time this happens that like, you're going to ask a few preliminary questions and then maybe decide based on that, or you're going to just always put, you know, the family first in that situation once you've said so, you know, so really it just depends, I think, case by case and, and trusting that you're making the right decision, like you're exactly where you need to be. And the mom guilt is real. It comes up often. And I think especially for moms in business, because we are so committed to our, like our passion, right? Our, our growing this business or, or succeeding in it. And, you know, even more so than when you work for someone else, it's, it's hard to separate those lines. And trust me, I have been so guilty of that sometimes where like I've been my own worst boss, like just putting immense pressure on myself where I know in my past corporate career, I wouldn't have treated myself that way. So, you know, just really being able to be self-aware and recognize like, hey, like, no, I, I don't need to get that done today. It's fine. Right. I know I can do it tomorrow or I can do it this weekend or I can do it you know, another time when I'm not as exhausted and I do want to prioritize what's important to me right now, which maybe is reading the kids a bedtime story or, you know, picking them up from school or going to the park, like you said. Yeah. Mom guilt, the dreaded mom guilt. It is tough, you know, when you're trying to be really good at all things. Sheryl Sandberg, did you read her, her book? Lean in. Mm -hmm. Um, it was really good. I, I read the chapter on you're not going to be good at all the things. And I thought, well, she's wrong. <laughs> I'm still going to try. <laughs> what do you know anyway? <laughs> it's that desire to, um, you know, always want to show up for um, your family. But also then, I mean, ultimately showing up for your business and generating the revenue for your, you know, to, to afford your family and certain lifestyle. It's still, it's, it's, that's, I think that's kind of the complicating piece is it's really still for your family. Yeah. And you just have to recognize, I think like the more you know about yourself, the better you can sort of combat that guilt, right? If you know you are a really ambitious person, you have to feed that. You have to feed that part of you because if you starve it, that guilt is going to show up in different ways. You know, mom guilt doesn't always come in, oh, I feel bad. I didn't take the kids to the park or I should have picked them up from school or whatever it is. It can show up in a plethora of ways. It can show up in financial guilt. You know, even the fact that you feel guilty investing in yourself because maybe you want to, you should be using that money on the kids or putting it in the college savings account. It can come up, you know, in time guilt of, you know, just should I take that Saturday and do something with my friends or should I hang out with my family? You know, it, it show, it's sneaky. <laughs> it shows up in many ways. So, you know, the more you can become aware of 
what you need, who you are, what your form of self-care looks like. And that changes by season, by day, by time of day, you know, the better you can actually be at showing up in all those places. And I, I have to disagree too. I do think you can have it all. And I do think you can be good at all the things. Well, thank you. I think, I think you're right. I, I thought the book was very good, um, very open and more um, honest and vulnerable than I, than I thought um, it would be. But that was the, the part where I was like, well, I mean, it was good except this one. <laughs> <laughs> I think, it, you know, that, that positive and kind of coming back to that more um, like getting away from the scarcity mindset and, and, you know, with time and with your energy and with effort and at least, you know, being optimistic about what is possible rather than starting with the, you know, the mindset of, well, it's not going to work anyway. Right. Yeah. I, I think a lot of moms, you know, when they're in the season of motherhood, whatever that is, whether that's with a new baby and they're, you know, got sleepless nights happening or whether that's adding to the family and adjusting to that or, you know, kids uh, in school, who knows, whatever season it is, we tend to place these excuses and they're very valid excuses. I don't want to minimize them in any way, but we tend to place them in front of our own pursuit of things that we want to do, our own goals, right? And we're like, well, this season's really hard because X, Y, Z, or that season's really hard because of this. And again, while they, they are very valid excuses and they are, you know, legitimate, they are excuses. Mm -hmm. They are excuses. Like we prioritize what's important to us. So in the end, I don't, I, I'm, I'm kind of a direct, I'm, I'm originally from New York, so I'm really direct in how I coach and teach and train and all these things. And, you know, sorry, not sorry, but like, it's on you. Yes. If you're not prioritizing those things, it's on you. Nobody's knocking on your door, door telling you to like prioritize your business, prioritize your self-care, prioritize this or that. You have to make it happen. You have to be really confident in the direction you're going. There's a, there was a, a fitness influencer type person who's actually local to me. And she has a, um, I think he's about two and a half. And he is really a part of everything she's got going on. And let me tell you, she cannot win on the parenting piece. She, she deals with it very well, but it's like the, the people online who feel like her, they can offer her advice on how she should be managing her, you know, balancing the juggling of the child and the work and, you know, oh, not hard enough on the child and, oh, that's too far the other way. And I just, people really feel like they can offer that advice in terms of how you're parenting or how you're juggling or balancing. And so if you're not secure in and confident in what you're doing, it's, it's very easy then to, to get pulled into, um, you know, oh, maybe that was too far or maybe that wasn't. And, and that's challenging. And I think it's really a more unique online. People just feel like they can offer their Totally. Opinion. It's like people, uh, what do they call it? Like when you drink, bef like to like get more social, like they drink like courage juice. It's like totally <laughs> online, right? People feel like they're behind the screen. They can say whatever they want to say. Trolls come out more frequently online. Absolutely. Yeah. But I agree. I mean, I, I think, and I struggle with it too sometimes myself because I'm a pretty private person in general. But I know, I know when I can be vulnerable in my business, that's when I connect the most with people. Like, for example, when I published my first book, Time Management, I, whew, the day after it got published, I was like, I had like a vulnerability hangover. I was like, oh, now people are actually going to read this. Oh my God. You know, there's a lot of personal stories in there, but the, the best and most frequent piece of advice that I, uh, or piece of feedback that I got from that book was the relatable factor. And it wouldn't have come if I hadn't shared those really vulnerable stories. And that is the balance. It's the balance of, you know, um, the vulnerability and the, you know, relatability and, and whatnot. I, I haven't published a whole book, but I was a part of a book actually just as I was leaving corporate almost like a chicken soup for the soul type book where we each kind of had a chapter and a story. And so when the book came out on launch day, my grandma, who I absolutely adore, was like, she was buying the book. Day one, she needed the book. And so it arrived quickly. And so she, she calls me. She says, so I read, I read, I read your book. I said, oh, this is, that's great. She goes, you shared a lot. I was like, oh no. <laughs> right? You I, had the hangover. Totally. It was this moment of like, oh no. And she's like, yeah, do you think it's going to be okay? 
<laughs> Grab me or not, not helping. <laughs> not the best thing you want to hear after your publication <laughs> goes live. <laughs> yes. Because I, and I, I thought, oh my goodness. So I get it. I'm like, okay, okay. And I, I'm like, no, it's okay. I'm like, and it's, I feel like it's almost because it was just as I was leaving corporate, I would probably have gone a slightly even more diff, like a different direction if I wrote the same story now in terms of being a little more vulnerable and, and whatnot. But in that moment of leaving, you know, corporate and sharing kind of my story and, and then, you know, but my, that moment with my grandma, it was like, oh. I was I was feeling okay until she called. <laughs> well, now I want to read the story. What book is this? <laughs> so it's called Women of Worth. Wow. And I was in the ninth book, Women in Ooh. Business in a Changing World. There's quite a few um, different stories. And, you know, it was such an incredible project to be a part of because all different um, women writing about their stories and, and different stories. And it was it was a very incredible experience for sure. Yeah, that sounds really powerful. And I'm sure very helpful to those who are reading it. It's uh, it was really my first big exercise in vulnerability, and uh, you know, let's you dove right in, <laughs> uh, dove right in, and um, you know, I I I often joke now I haven't seen my comfort zone since that moment. It was like we jumped yes right out of the comfort zone and we just kept going. <laughs> Tangible tips that someone could implement tomorrow and, you know, get benefit by the end of the week. What are those, those pieces that people can get that quick win? Okay. Yes. I think, um, we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, which is your mindset around time, right. And, and really looking at time from a scarcity mindset. So if you are someone who finds themselves saying, I don't have time often, or if you catch yourself saying that, I want you to flip the script on these words. I want you to start replacing, I don't have time with it's not a priority to me. So let's quickly exemplify this. So let's say you're someone who really wants to exercise, but you find yourself saying often, I don't have time to work out. I don't have time to exercise. I don't have time to go to the gym. So now I want you to flip that around and I want you to say exercise isn't a priority to me. Going to the gym isn't a priority to me. Working out isn't a priority to me. And what's going to happen is you're going to go one or of two ways. And to me, they're both winning. You're both winning, right? No matter which direction you go. So in one direction, you say this out loud and all of a sudden you feel lighter. You feel better. You feel less guilty, less shame because you know what? It's not a priority to you. So why are you trying to convince yourself right. it is, right? And that's fine. And this could mm -hmm. be temporary. Maybe it's just the season you're in. Maybe it's just the day. Maybe it's just the week. And you know what? As soon as you kind of like lift that off your shoulders, you can kind of just free up a ton of mental space and go on with your day in like a much better mindset and mood, right? With less guilt, less shame. Yes. So winning, in my opinion, even if you don't get to get the exercise in on that day. The other way that you're going to feel is you're not going to feel so good when you say this out loud, working out isn't a priority to me. You're going to feel icky. You're going to feel really misaligned. And what's going to happen is you're going to find a way to make it a priority, right? You're going to wake up earlier or go to sleep later or use a lunch hour or, you know, fit it in in between calls or whatever it is because it doesn't align with your values and what actually you want to be a priority in your day. So you're going to figure out how to make it one. Such a different, you know, two very different reactions, like you said, both winning. Um, and, and depending on what it is, you know, if you're adding these unnecessary things to your task list that really aren't a priority that you feel obligated to do. And then you say, you know, it, that's not a priority to me right now. You might think, yeah, that's, that's true. That's right. Like I, it's just not the right time. I find the working out piece is, um, you know, the exercising and all of that. When you're when you're in the routine of doing it, when it's a part of your schedule, it fits. You're, you know, there's it's you can't imagine not doing it. It's like that's part of your routine. I'm a very um, routine like habitual person, so um, even when I like travel for different conferences or whatnot, I feel just disorganized if I'm like eating different foods and those kinds of things. But when you're when you're working out, it's just a part of it. And when you're not working out and it's not a part of your schedule, the thought of where does it fit? It's you're like, I can't imagine coming up with that amount of time every week, but it's once it's back a part of your schedule and routine, if you've kind of fallen out of that, it, it truly is um, just becomes kind of part of the, 
part of the Yeah, I totally agree. I think habits are so important, so helpful, so necessary. In my membership program right now, we're actually doing, we do quarterly challenges where we implement a new habit. So habits scientifically take about 21 days to stick. So for 21 days, yeah. we are right now in our, our second quarter, uh, quarterly challenge. We are doing walk at least a mile a day for 21 days. Sure. So that you said that this is a new program. Is this, is it still open for people to join in? Where could they join in if they were interested? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's called Biz Management Club. And it's a monthly membership program. We do monthly group coaching. We have a, a monthly uh, expert, guest expert who comes in and does a workshop. We have weekly check-ins for accountability and support, get your questions answered. There's a resource library of fabulous trainings and downloadable PDFs and quizzes and lots of great things. And it's really, um, and we do these quarterly challenges, as I mentioned, and it's really for uh, the moms who are juggling, you know, uh, building or growing their business alongside motherhood and all the other hats that we're wearing. That's like a really, really interesting program and probably some, you know, community building going on there as well when you're finding kind of those like-minded people. For sure. For sure. Yes. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being here today. It's really been fantastic. And I, I love that, you know, you can be a mom and be a business owner and, and whether that's the mompreneur to you or whether that's something different, it's, it's ultimately um, juggling and finding ways to do so um, that feel good to you. Yes. When you feel good, you do good. That's what I like to say. Well, we are all out of time for today. If you guys have not joined the Service-Based Business Society Facebook community, make sure you head on over to Facebook and we can continue the conversation. Be sure to also follow the show by going to any podcast app and searching Surface Base Business Society, click subscribe, click the fifth star and leave us a written review. Have a great week and we will see you soon.